guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to The Geek Group. We are here today with Deke Ludwig, who holds a world record for being the youngest kid in the world to build a full, what was it, a full functioning electric vehicle or a full electric yeah. vehicle convertible? Yeah. He built a car. He built, well, a truck. <laughs> built an electric truck at 15. Okay, so th this is quite the story. Now, let me, tell me if I get any of this wrong. Okay. You, there was a professor who inspired you to do this. Yeah, I saw a newspaper article uh, in our local newspaper about a guy that did this. And it was before high school, before I was in high school yet. And I thought, wow, that would be so awesome if I could do that. And, um, and I kind of brought up the question. And my parents, being who they are, said, <laughs> why not? You know? and, um, and I was able to uh, purchase this. And, um, and this is a 2000 Chevy S10? Yes. Okay. And a week later, I'm ripping, I took, I ripped the engine out, the bed, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't really know what dad was thinking, like, when we bought it, it worked great, but then I, ru I ruined it for, like, Ten months. You should see the hate mail we're getting on the Lotus of like, you took the engine out! And it, because it, people freak out when you, when you take a perfectly working vehicle and gut it yeah, out. Yeah. So after you gutted it, what did you do? Uh, after I gutted it, it was, um, the gutting process took like, I don't know, a couple weeks or so. And, um, and then it went, I completely stripped down the frame, um, down to bare metal, primed it, painted it. Um, and uh, I, did, I did the back half in a barn, and then um, my dad's actually a woodworker, and I brought it into his woodworking shop, <laughs> and it filled the entire thing. There's picture, I have some pictures where it's just like you can't actually, like, it's just like filling the whole wood shop. I mean, the wood shop is probably like as big as like from this car. All day, you know? <laughs> like, it's just... You know, it was hilarious to see this huge car inside a wood, wood shop, but, um, but yeah, the whole front, everything was taken off. The cab stayed intact pretty much. This door got taken off for, I think we had to repaint it or something. Okay. Um, but it was completely down to the frame, primed, uh, painted, um, and then from there it was kind of like a slow process of researching every part from the motor to the controller to the batteries to the charger um, and putting it all in, figuring out a way to kind of like fabricate each piece to get it to work and all that kind of stuff. So, so how old were you when it, when it ran? When it ran, I was 16. Okay. I was able to, I, yeah, I was able to drive, drive it. What's the max range? Give us the basic specifications on it. Uh, when I first converted it, it was like probably like 40 miles and then um, and then I got another battery pack, and it's kind of more performancey type thing, and it's like 20 miles. Okay, but it's 20 romping, stomping miles. <laughs> the, well, I'm the guessing only... you traded off range for performance. <laughs> the yes, the only thing is the controller, which is you have motor, controller, battery are the three main things to make it go fast, and the okay. controller was the weak link. Okay, because I couldn't push as many amps through as I wanted to. Can you give us a nickel tour and show us? Oh, yeah, sure. sure. So continue on with your story. What happened after that? So actually, what happened, it looks completely... Wow. <laughs> That's neat. It's completely different now than it was when I first started. OK. Um, it actually, this truck has basically gone through two conversions. Um, the first time, it was, uh, I, I have some pictures of it that I can show you, but it's completely different. Everything was, the, it was not laid out this way. This was diamond plate. Um, you know, everything was. Now, as a serious fan of diamond plate, I gotta ask, why did you get rid of the diamond plate? And... It's, uh, this isn't conductive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it basically, one of the main reasons why I like to do it that way is, you know, you got, really high voltage stuff going through. Uh, if that was diamond plate, if that ever wore down. Yeah, you'd you know, start welding all of a sudden. Yeah, so it wouldn't be, wouldn't be. Now the motor is down under this? Yeah, the motor is down under. Um, is there an easy way to access that or? You, you can, 
this does lift up. Do, but does the it lift up way. easily? Um, <laughs> not really, but okay. we might be able to do it. There might be a wire there going down. Yeah, there's one here going down, and it's. And then there's some wires going down, cables and stuff. I don't know if it's gonna work. Can we? Oh yeah, we can get a look there. Let's let's get a camera up in there and get a look at it. That's the. Uh, that is a whole lot of motor. <laughs> Eleven inches of DC power. There's a motor cooler here. Okay. There's power steering pump there. Now it's air cooled. Yep, air cooled. It just it just blows air through. Okay. There's no radiator, nothing like that. If you look here, the, the, the grill is sealed off. There's no need for it anymore. Okay. So uh, you've built it, you've refined the design, you've done multiple conversions, really? Yeah, I mean, this is basically a second conversion. After, um, after using it for a while, I, everything came back out. It was down to just basically gutted again. Okay. And and then and then I basically rebuilt everything, and it, it was working fine. But like I just thought I could do better. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that was the. Uh, it's the a common theme around, around here. here. <laughs> so um, yeah, and kind of got. I learned a lot from the first one. So uh, the, the the second time around, I really kind of made sure that I was um, routing all the wiring and everything really. Uh, put some thought into it. You know. Okay. Now, when was the <laughs> second conversion? Uh, Any idea? I don't remember. It was just kind of like a thing that happened. Okay. You know. And what yeah. happened after that? Unless Dad knows. Do you remember? <laughs> Does anybody remember? <clears throat> no. Two years ago? 17? <laughs> yeah, probably, probably in there somewhere. Okay. And then? S and then let's see. Um, let's see what. And then we drove it for a while. Dad used it to commute to work. Really? Um, yeah. Com yeah. Like on a daily basis? Or? Uh, it wasn't completely daily, but like we did use it for that kind of thing. I used it. I drove it to uh, Boy Scout meetings and all sorts of stuff. So um, yeah, we definitely used it. Um, uh, and it, you know, it worked. It's Legal okay. Way. Now, how how does the geek group come into play in this? Uh, so I built it. The reason I built it is because I strongly believe that this is what we need to be thinking about. And um, and the reason I built it, I had this dream of going to schools and talking and educating and getting people excited about uh, the awesome future of. Um, transportation and how everything is changing right now. We're in a we're in a time of transition where like it's almost like a revolution or something. Everything is being um, re-engineered, rethought, and it's very exciting time to be interested in this kind of thing. And I wanted to kind of like instill that in other people. And I did a little bit of that, but I couldn't do it anywhere near as well as you guys do it. <laughs> so uh, so. This, like, having it come to the geek group is, like, exactly what I wanted it. It's, it was built to come to the geek group. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are going to give it a very good and loving home and share it with as many of our closest friends as humanly possible. Awesome. So that's, that's the entire mission. Now, I got, a, I got a question for you. How would having a place like the geek group and the resources of, of membership, because you're a member of the Geek Group now, but you weren't back then when you first built this. How would that have impacted this, of being able to have a, a peer group of people to bounce ideas off of and help with this? Well, I think the first thing is um, inspiration. And I was inspired. I wasn't inspired by the Geek Group, but I could, I could see how um, I would have been a lot. And just watching the videos and... Um, and that kind of thing. It totally, like, like, I wish I could, like, tell you how I get, like, physically excited <laughs> watching it. I know it. what you mean. <laughs> and um, so 
I think the first part there is the inspiration and kind of like creating a dream and then, um, and then following that dream. And of course, after that, you need... Um, I did most of, uh, pretty much all the research for this online um, through YouTube people that had done it, um, had done conversions. Um, I definitely would have uh, um, used the Geek Group, but you hadn't done one yet. We didn't know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, people from Australia I talked to all over the place. Um, the, I mean, the internet is amazing at connecting people that, that uh, are interested in the same thing, but, you know, aren't necessarily in the same area or, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I did, I mean, pretty much I educated myself on how to do this on YouTube. And that's a big part of why we're here, is to help people to edu where does this go? Just, oh, right there. Is to help people to educate themselves. Mm -hmm. And this, this is why we exist, is guys like you. Is to make this happen and bring them together and share these resources. And that's the big mission in Deke donating this truck. Is that now this is a project, and, and you're an active member, He's headed off. He's not far from here. He's based out of Chicago now. So you're going, going to Columbia. Going to school in Chicago. For film! <laughs> Just cool. It's going to be one of us. But this exists. And that one, which we're about to build, exists for more guys like you out there. They, all those people out there to come and be a part of it and steal ideas and see what works and what don't and build their own vehicles and get together and build ours so that they can make the mistakes here in the lab and they can blow up the expensive parts here. <laughs> and yeah, see, I, I, I've I, done I've that. been there, yeah. I've done that. <laughs> and that's the idea is here we can make the mistakes together and nobody gets hurt and it doesn't end up costing you $1,000 for that thing, you know, because we'll get 10 of them donated and stuff like that. This lets us change the rules and play in a safe sandbox. And that's what the Geek Group's all about. So all you guys out there that are interested in building, in making, in tinkering, I don't care if it's an electric car or a golf cart or Nerf guns or whatever you want to build, robots, lasers, Tesla coils, it's why we're here. There's a whole world of people out there that have that dream of, of building their thing. And guys like Deke are proof of this. I mean, we're, we're all the same. We're all geeks. We all like to tinker. The only thing that's different is the projects. The passion is universal. And we want to share that with you. So right now, go to thegeekgroup.org and get involved. Membership is free and open to anyone with a sincere and passionate desire to learn. Come here, get involved, and let's help build your dream. Until next time, I'm Chris Bowden, and you are? Deke Gladwig. All right, thank you, sir. Deke's awesome S10 is on display here at the Geek Group, where it is now an active project in the Geek Group Vehicular Sciences Lab. You guys have fun. See you next time. made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.